Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is a video about the monochrome selection macro which is in Dave's saturation selection set which you can find in the link down below and to import it you go from here to library and import macros and find the download. So let's apply it to this image here and uh, nothing seems to happen but it's put another layer on the top here and what it's done it's taken a copy of what's visible uh, and applied a, a control here to it. If I double click that the controls appear here. So what I can do with this is if I just go here so I've got the double arrow there and then I can drag this up and I can see all of the controls. Never mind about that there because that's all the calculation involved. What it does is it lets you separate out monochrome areas. In other words black, white and grey. And if I turn off the bottom layer you can see what it's done. So the top layer here with this control aid you've got the monochrome appearing through the image which means that I can now I, with this image I can turn it into a mask or a selection uh, or I can just leave it like this and have controls which I will often do because it means that it's dynamic. I can go back and mod modify it. So for example if I've got this here if I put on the curves um, I could bring this up here and I'm brightening up this area here but you might hear the, the sky looks a bit odd but I can easily go back to this here and turn up the, fe the feathering and that will soften that so this blends in a lot more. Sometimes of course it just goes a little bit you know too far and you just have to turn those curves back down again but this allows you to make this kind of separation so you can see sort of a bore before and after it's added that actual punch to the um, lighter areas here. You can always mask off areas as well of course. The feather down here, these, these things here, they, these two at the top, let's start from the top. The, t the top one here is the amount of monochrome you select, turning off the bottom layer. So I start from here it's just the more whites and the more blacks. And as you go on how you get the almost whites and the almost blacks and the, the greys and so on. And eventually you start getting the colour coming into it. So it's kind of like drawing that line between it. If you've got the feathering right down it'll be a quite a hard edge to this as you go up. The fine it adds the last 10% but it's quite sensitive. So even this just adding you know, 0 to 10% to the course it has quite an effect and it's useful to be able to use both of those which is why I've included them. The feather here lets you change the way that it is feathered. Here this is a linear one which is cut sort of fairly continuous. Uh, if I roll the mouse wheel over this it'll change the number so it's got to one now which is EXB for exponential and another one here for cosine and it has a subtle effect. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's too small to worry about but if you're tinkering it gives you something to play with. This one here has a more significant effect because this has changed the way that the whole thing is calculated. So it defaults to zero so an equal amount of bias is placed on the whites, um, the tones, tints and shades. Which in other words the, the tones are with grey in them, the, the tints have got more white in them and the shades have got more black in them. So if I turn this one up to one it's going to go to grey and it uses the traditional saturation calculation. So things like you can see the word text appearing here but the blacks and whites turned down. If I go up to 2 it goes to WT so the clouds come up more here and I'm losing more of the, the black detail here. Go up to 3 get a lot more of the black detail and the clouds and the whites there are less affected. So it gives you a little, quite a bit of control. This one's pretty usable. I use that a lot. And this one at the bottom simply inverts it so you can Instead of selecting monochrome you can select the colour elements. So I turn that on there you can see the holes in the clouds there. So I can do effectively reverse selection and select colours. So there you go. What else can you do? Let's um, turn this off because what I can do is with the bottom layer I can also apply controls here. Because this is top layer has got the monochromes on that effectively blocks out anything that happens to the monochromes on the bottom layer. So the bottom layer will give you controls for colour. So for example I can then go to say HSL here and play with the saturation on here 
and you get a kind of an effect here on the things which are selected. If I'm turning up here, for example, going, oh, look, this is a little bit, this is affecting this too much. I can go back up to the select monochrome here and play with this here. And you can see this is going to change this amount and use the fine as well. So this is taking that out. So this is uh, the way if it's affected in a way that's more helpful. Um, if you sometimes you will get, say, like edge effects like this. Well, that's from turning down the feathering, which is going to increase the edge effects. So you just tweak it to wherever it seems to work the best. If you've still got effects here like this, you can either mask um, or just turn something down. You're never going to get, if you turn any control too far in any way, it starts to get invisible in what you're doing. But basically, this that's the bottom line. Is it lets you separate out the monochrome or even the colour by inverting it. That's it, and thank you very much for watching.